Praise the Lord Jesus. God bless you. This is the Hot Man a Minute, and today we are starting spirit, Advanced Spiritual Warfare, Part 1. Okay, so this first part, if you have an outbreak of Islam in your area, if you have mosques popping up, or if you have any Shriners, okay, uh, not Freemasonry, that's another spirit we'll get into in the next series, but this is having to do with if you have mosques, Islam, or Shriners in your area, and you... This, you're called to do spiritual warfare. This video is for you. This is not going to be like my normal videos. This is going to be a quick, comprehensive teaching on advanced spiritual warfare against the spirit of Islam. Okay? Um, so real quick, because this is... there's We're going to be talking about some things right now. I don't want to open any spiritual doors, so let me just say a quick prayer. So, Father... In the name of Jesus Christ, I come into agreement with the viewer right now. We plead the blood of the Lamb over any doorway right now coming through the device or in coming through the eye gate in any way, shape, or form or the ear gate. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, and we come into you. We abide in you as you are our protection and our Savior. And Lord, for those brothers and sisters that are called to do spiritual warfare, I pray this video will resonate in their spirit. And Lord, for those that are not called and not mature enough to handle this yet, I pray you'll turn them away from this video now. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. So, ask the Lord if you're called to do this. If you are called to do this, um, I'm going to show you an amazing revelation that's going to help get you started. Okay, so first we're going to start. Let's start with here. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says... That which has been is what will be, and that which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. So, when the angels fell in Genesis chapter 6, those same rebellious fallen angels are the same things we're battling today. It's now the end, they, their time is short, and they're doing everything they can, okay? We, we know this, alright? For those of you that have... Walked with Jesus, he's probably poured this revelation out on you daily. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I want to show you an amazing find here that's going to help you. And I know this is some of the most boringest chapters of the Bible have the most amazing revelations packed in them. In 2 Kings chapter 17, verse, we're going to read verse 30, 31, and 32. There's amazing revelation here for you, and I'm going to show you something, okay? Each one of these demon gods listed exist in our world today, okay? You can have a mosque or something in your neighborhood and be praying against it and you will see no fruit when, because you're not calling it what it is, all right? The Bible reveals something here, and I'm going to show you the demon that is um, the power behind the spirit of Islam because that same demon was, was the one that fell at the fall in Genesis 6. It's always been here. There's nothing new under the sun. It's time is short, and it's time to bring it to an end. And as the Lord leads, we'll go through a study part on each one of these demon gods and how they, they apply. Like, for example, you know, Nibhez here, he's um, uh, Anubis of the Egyptian gods. Tartuk is Moloch. Whenever there's a baby aborted, that demon gets strengthened. But the one I want to look at today is Animalek. And so let me read 2 Kings 17, 30 and 31. The men of Babylon made Sukkoth Banoth. Okay, that's one demon. The men of Kuth made Nurgle. There's another one. The men of Hamath made Ashma. Now, everybody knows that one. That's Ashroth. We get Easter and all that. Uh, Jezebel's also connected to it. Uh, continuing, verse 31. And the Avites made Nibhez and Tartek. The Severites burned their children to the fire to Adrimelech. And this is the one we're going to look at today. Animalek. We're going to start our part one series with Animalek. Now... Have you ever noticed that all Muslim mosques in all Shriners buildings have uh, a crescent moon and star on them? You ever wonder that? Well, I'm, without getting too far into demonology, I'm going to show you what Wikipedia says, okay? This is by the worldly standards, which they hide a lot of information. But according to Wikipedia, a Nimelech, according to the Hebrew Bible, was worshipped along a Drimelech. We just read that. Now, a Drimelech was the sun god. And Animalek, she is the lunar deity, as is said to have been worshipped at Ser Serhavim, an Assyrian town. Uh, the name means Anu is king. Now, Anu is king, that goes into Nimrod and Genesis 11, which is a whole other teaching. But we're just going to focus 
on the same demon as the name of Animalek because now it goes by Allah, okay? It changed its name just like it went from Anu to Animalek to Allah, okay? So, if you have a mosque, if you are combating Muslims or Shriners in your area, oh, I forgot to tell you, this demon, it manifests through dreams, okay? It's, it's subconscious, it's powers in the subconscious realm. So when you plead, you got to plead the blood of Jesus over your mind before you go to bed. And, and when you say it, you got to say, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over my subconscious mind. And them demons can't touch you. Now, if you want to, if you are being led of the Lord, not if you want, but if you are being led of the Lord, you're feeling pulled in the direction of spiritual warfare. And you choose to take up the mantle and combat these demons and principalities in your region. Make sure first you get confirmation from God. Second, when you pray against the spirit of Animalek. Okay, you need to realize you don't even all you got to do is when you pray, say, Lord, I bind up the spirit of Animalek in my region. That's it. Focus on that prayer right there. Because, see, as this deity, Jesus is so powerful in, in the Middle East right now, it's known that Muslims are being saved. How? They're, they're seeing Christ in their dream. So the same way this demon manifests, Jesus Christ is breaking down uh, Animalek in his own power. His own power is a dream realm, and Jesus is saving Muslims in their dream. Now, if you have Muslims in your neighborhood, remember, God loves the person, the flesh. We bless the person, the human being. But the spirit that's driving them, this this spirit right here, you got to call it out. Because I was trying for years, I was praying against Allah, I was praying against Muhammad, I was pray, calling out the spirit of Islam, and, and to no avail. As soon as I start to pray against the spirit of Animalek, um, I start seeing fruit and you will too. Okay. So in your own time, and I'll go through this. If you don't want to wait for me to get to each one, each one of these demons has a connection to our world today. Okay. This is the one for Islam. This is the one for the Shriners. The Shriners are a wicked, evil organization. Have you ever wondered why their symbol is also the crescent moon and the sword with the hat? It's the same thing because it's the same principality and power ruling it. Like remember when you were a kid, you ever seen a puppet where there's a puppet and there's somebody pulling the strings of the puppet? Well, whenever you see anything associated with Islam and Shriners, the one pulling the strings above them is this wicked, wretched, cursed demon and Nimelech right here. So guys, pray about this. Um, this is going to be the first series, comprehensive spiritual warfare, because it's time. It's time to take our land back in the spirit. All right. So God bless you guys. If you have any questions or you need any help with anything, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to willing to help or pray with you or whatever you need. Okay. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and guide you in all truth. In his holy name, I pray. Amen.